Welcome to the video for this session. In this session, we talked about being able to how you set your worksheets up, how you do a simple sort of information, how you do a multi level sort of information, how you can filter your data so you can only focus on part of your list rather than, than be overwhelmed with an awful long list, how you do subtotals in Microsoft Excel. In this video, I'll be talking about some different ways that you can manage lists of information. Microsoft Excel is great for a number of different things. It's great for doing calculation work. It's great for managing lists of information. It's great for doing uh, graphs or charts. In this, ex in, the, in this video, I'll be talking about a number of different things. I'll be talking about how you set your worksheets up properly for, for list management purposes, how you do a simple sort of information, how you do a multi-level sort of information, how you filter information so you only focus on part of your list, uh, how you do subtotals in Microsoft Excel. I'm working with a file again that you can download called Sample Files. I'm on a worksheet called Manage Lists. And in this spreadsheet, there's a listing of different employee numbers for a university or a college. It shows their employee number in the first column, their names in the last, sorry, in the column B and column C. It shows how old they are in column D. It shows their faculty that they work in in column E, their position in column F, and finally their salary in column G. The first thing I want to talk about before I do any, any work with managing this list is talking about how you set your worksheets up. It's really important when you set your worksheets up that you follow some really simple rules. The first thing is, is to make sure that your headings at the top of your spreadsheet uh, are look different than your, than your actual data. In this example, what I did was I had bolded the information, I center aligned it, and I put a border underneath it. If nothing else, at least bold your headings in your spreadsheet. This way Excel can pick up that those are headings. When you, go to do, when you go to sort your data, they will not include the headings in with your sorted data. That's the first step. Make sure that your, that your headings look different than your data. The second thing is, do not put any blank rows in your data, and especially don't put a blank row in after your heading. If I put a blank row in row four, Excel will get quite confused. It'll see where the headings are, but then it'll see a blank row underneath it and really have a hard time understanding where the data is that you want to work with. So always format your headings, at least bold them, and do not put a blank row in after your heading and try not to have any blank rows in your data at all. What I want to now talk about is how you go about sorting data. I want to sort this list by the faculty. For example, I want to have all the people that work in the arts faculty together, all of those that work in the communication faculty together, and so on. To sort data, all you do is you click on the column that you want to use as your key column for sorting purposes. So in this case, I click somewhere in column E on a cell that has some data in it. I don't select anything. All I do is I click in the column that I want to use for sorting purposes. Now when I do sort, it's going to bring the entire row or the entire record along with it. Right now this list is sorted by employee numbers that will get scrambled in the moment because when I go to do the sort, everything's going to move with it. So it's not just the column that's going to move, it's the entire record set, the entire row is going to move along with it. So I click in column E in this case because I want to sort by the faculty column. I want to sort data. So I'm going to go to the Data tab above the ribbon and click. It changes the look of the ribbon. And up on the ribbon, there's a Sort and Filter group. Now in the Sort and Filter group, I'm going to go to the small A to Z button and click. And what it does, it sorts it by the faculty column. And notice now that the employee numbers are no longer in order because the entire record moved along with it. So there's all the arts together, all the communication together, and so on. This is called single level sorting. All you do is you click on the column that you want to sort by, you use the A to Z button at the top up on the ribbon to sort your data. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to click somewhere in the position column. I want to resort this by the position that they have. So back up to the ribbon again, I'll click on A to Z. It resorts it so all the associate professors are first, all the counselors second, and so on. And again, the entire record moves along with it. A third example, I click somewhere in the salary column. I want to sort this so I can see the largest salary first and the smallest salary last. This time a little bit different. I'm going to go back to the ribbon again, but this time I'll find the ZA button, sort largest to smallest. I'll click, and what it does, it resorts the data. It shows me the largest salary, second largest salaries, and so on. So it's real easy to do sorting of data in Excel. All you do is you click on the column that you want to sort by, and you use either the A to Z button or the ZA button up on the ribbon. I'm going to do it one more time. I want to put this back to its original order. I'll click on the Employee ID column and go back to the A to Z button to put it back into its original order again. That's, sing that's single level sorting. Now sometimes you need to do a more complex sort. In this case, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to sort it by the faculty first, hold on to that sort, then sort it by the position second, hold on to that sort, then sort it by the salary column third. So an example of a three level sort. 
So to do a three-level sort or a multi-level sort, all you do is make sure you're in a cell in data. You can't be out here in a blank part of your spreadsheet. So I'm in a cell. I'll go up to the ribbon again. I'm still on the data tab. I'm sorting data. In the ribbon, in the sort and filter group, I'm going to look for the larger button that says the word sort and click. And it takes me into a multi-level sort window. And in this window, it automatically remembers the way that I sorted my last time. So it says sort by employee ID. I want to first of all sort by the faculty. So I'll click on the drop down arrow and it shows me all the headings in my spreadsheet and it knows what the headings are because I had at least I had, I had formatted my headings. I had at least bolded them. I'll click on faculty and off to the right it'll say A to Z. So arts will be first, communication second and so on. I want to hold on to that sort and do another level of sorting. So in this window in the upper left hand corner I'll click on the button that says add level. It puts a second level on for sorting. I'll go to where it says then by in the second row, click on the drop down arrow, and I'll choose in this case the position choice. So by faculty first of all, and then by position, I want to do another level of sorting. So in the upper left hand corner again, I'll click add level. In the third row, I'll choose the arrow again. I'll choose the last choice, which is the word salary. And off to the right, because this is a numbered column, it gives me a different choice. I'm going to change this from smallest to largest to largest to smallest. So sort of by faculty first, by position second, and then by salary third, showing the largest salary to the smallest salary. And when I click OK, I'll have all the arts together, I'll have all the associate professors together, and all the counselors together. So looking at the counselors, the largest salary for a counselor, down to the smallest salary for a counselor, then it moves on to the next position in the arts area, professor. As I scroll down, eventually arts will change to communication. It'll resort the position again. Communication will change to design. It'll resort that again. So that's an example of doing a multi-level sort. And you do that by clicking in a cell in your data and using the larger sort button up on the ribbon. The next list management technique I want to talk about is filtering data. But before I do that, I want to put this back to its original order. So I'll click back in column A on employee number. I'll go back to A to Z to put this back to its original order. This time what I want to do is I want to sort the data, I want to filter the data. So all I'm going to see is the information for perhaps the management faculty. So rather than look at a long list of information, what you might want to do with your data is to filter data so you can just focus on part of your list rather than be overwhelmed with the entire list. So to do filtering, you have to first of all be in a cell in your data area. Then up on the ribbon, click on the data tab. We want to filter data. In the sort and filter group, look for the filter button and click it. And when you do that, it puts arrows on all of your headings at the top of your spreadsheet. And these arrows are called filter buttons. What I want to do is filter to only see all of the information for the management part of the organization. So click on the faculty arrow. That's the faculty filter button. I'll get a drop down list of choices. And in here, it shows me all the different choices that were in that column. All I want to see is the information for the management faculty. So I'll take all the check marks out except for faculty. So if you want to see something, you leave the check mark in. If you want to hide something, you, leave the ch you take the check mark out. I'll click OK. And all I'm going to see now in my list are all of the information for the management faculty. So it's just a nice way to see a short list compared to, entire, to the entire list. Now, if you haven't lost anything, what's happened is if you now hidden some of the rows that didn't meet your criteria. I want to continue to look at the, at the faculty called management, but I only want to see there are the people that are, have a position that, that's called uh, uh, professor. So I'll go to the filter button, the filter arrow in column F, and click. It shows me all the different choices in the list. Now in this case, this is a pretty long list. All I want to see is the professor choice. What I could do is take my time and take all the check marks out. But in this case, it might be faster if I take all the check marks out. So I'll click on select all to remove all the check marks. And I'll click back on professor and OK. And all I'm going to see now are the, are the four professors that are in the management area. If I want to change that filter, I go back up to F3 and click. I also want to see associate professor. So I'll click on associate professor and professor and OK. And I'm going to see professor and associate professor all together. If I want to sort this, I just go back up and click on somewhere in that column and sort this A to Z. So I see all those associate professors together with the professors, but only for the management faculty. So this is a really nice way to be able to see just parts of your data and not be overwhelmed with an awful long list. And if I were to print this, by the way, all I would get on my printout would be the listing that I see in front of me. 
I want to clear off the filter. It's going to go back up to the ribbon. The filter button is turned on. I can tell it's turned on because it has orange in color. I'll click on that to bring all my data back again. I want to do another example of filtering. This time what I want to do is do a custom filter. I just want to be able to see information for anybody. I want to just see people in this list that have a salary greater than $100,000. So going back up again to turn on my filters. I'm going to go to the salary filter arrow this time. Now I could take my time and take all the check marks out for those that were under $100,000. But instead of that, I'm going to go above the check marks to a line that says number of filters. And I get some different choices. I'm going to slide across and click on greater than. In this window, I'll type in the value that I want to look for greater than, in this case, 100,000, and I click OK. And all it's going to show me now are those people that have a salary greater than 100,000. And if I want to sort this, I can click on the list. I'll do a sort A to Z, smallest to the largest. And there's my 102,000 people, 112,000 people, and so on. Good. Go back and turn off the filter again to bring my entire list back. The next thing I want to talk about is how you do a top 10 filter. Now, it's called a top 10 filter, but it doesn't have to be a top 10 filter. It could be a top 12 filter. It could be a bottom 6 filter, for example. It does it calls itself a top 10 filter, but you can, you can modify that. So again, I'm going to turn on my filters. I'm going to go to the arrow in column G and click. I'm going to go to number filters, and this time I'll slide across and click on top 10. It does start as a top 10, but I could change it to be a bottom 10. I change it back to top. I want this to be the top 8 instead, so I'll make this down to top 8. So top 8 items based upon the salary column. I'll click OK. And what it gives me is the top, the top 8 salaries in the list. So it's a nice way to just see part of your data. You can filter this by choosing the arrows in the drop-down list. You can do things that are greater than something, less than something, or in this case, you can do a top 10 or a top 8 or a top 27 list if you need to do so. So remove the filter, and my entire list comes back again. So those are some examples of how you can filter your data. And the last topic in this session is another list management technique, and this is called doing subtotals. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to find the total salary for all of the people that work in the faculty called arts, the total salary for all the people that work in the faculty called communication, and so on. So this is, called, this is called doing subtotaling. Now before you do subtotaling, you have to first of all sort your data in the way you want to do your subtotals. So in this case, I want to see, that I want to see subtotals for each faculty for their salaries. So I have to first of all sort it by the faculty column. So I click somewhere in the faculty column. I use the small A to Z button to sort it. And you can now see all the arts is together, all the communications are together, and so on. Then the next thing I'll do is I'm going to ask the system to look in the faculty column. When something in the faculty column changes, for example, in row 38, where arts changes the communication, it'll recognize that change. It'll insert a brand new row and add the numbers up over in the salary column. When communication changes to design, down in row 74, it'll recognize that change. It'll insert a brand new row and add the salaries up for us in column G. So the first step to do subtotaling is, is to first of all search your data. Then the second step is, is, to, is to get to a subtotal window. To do this, we're on the Data tab. We want to get subtotals for our data. Towards the right side of the ribbon, click on Subtotal. It takes you into a subtotal window. Now, in this window, there are three main boxes. The first box says, at each change in, it wants to know which column am I supposed to look for for something to change. It automatically assumes you want it to look in the first column. That's why it picks on Employee ID. In our example, we want, to, we want it to look in the Faculty column for something to change. So we're going to choose Faculty on the drop-down list. Now, when, when something in the faculty column changes, when arts changes to communication, for example, it'll recognize that change. It'll put a brand new row in for us. It wants now to know what function should I use. It assumes that you want to use the sum function. There are other choices. We could do a count, for example. We are going to sum things, so I'll click on sum. And then in the last box, it shows all the headings that are in our spreadsheet, employee ID, last name, first name, and so on. It wants to know which column or columns does, should, should have put the subtotals in. It always assumes the last column, which in this case is the salary column. Now, if there are other columns in here that had numbers in it, we could put a check mark in other boxes as well. So to recap this, it's going to look on the faculty column. 
When the faculty name changes from Arts to Communication, for example, it'll put a brand new row in. It's going to sum up the salary column. And when I click OK, I'm going to get subtotals showing up in my spreadsheet. You can see down here in row 38, for example, there's my subtotal. Further down, there's my subtotal for communication. So I get my subtotal showing up. But if I just wanted to see the subtotals, on the left-hand side of the screen is this area called the summarizing area. And in the summarizing area at the top are three summarizing buttons, one, two, and three. If I click number one, for example, I'll see my grand total. I'm just going to fix the column. My grand total of salaries is 22 million. If I go to number two in the summarizing area, I'll see my subtotals on a faculty basis. If I go to number three, I'll see all the detail. Now, if for some reason I want to hide some of the detail on here for communication, for example, I can move off to the left of row 75. There's a collapsing button, looks like a minus sign. If I click that, what it does, it hides the detail for communication. I can bring this back, though, by going to the plus sign to the left to bring it back. Again, if I want to just see the subtotals, I go to the number two summarizing button on the left-hand side just to see subtotals in my my data. Now I want to be able to walk through the whole process again. I want to remove the subtotals. So I'm going to go back up again to the subtotal button and click. In the bottom left hand corner I'll click on remove all and that'll get rid of my subtotals. This time what I want to do is I want to do a head count. I want to count how many different positions we have. Uh, so how many different people we have in the different positions. I want to find out how many associate professors we have, how many professors we have, and so on. So we're going to do subtotals for this again. The first step is to do subtotals, is to sort your data in the way you want to do subtotals. So back up to the ribbon again. I clicked on the position column, by the way. Back to the ribbon. I'll click on A to Z. It sorts it by associate professor, by counselor, and so on. I now want to do a count to find out how many associate professors there are, how many counselors there are, and so on. So back up on the ribbon again, still on the data tab. I'll click on subtotal, right side of the ribbon. I'm going to change this to be at every change in position. I want to count, and I'll count the salary column, and click OK. And I can see there's my, my count for associate professors. There's my count for counselors. If I just want to see the subtotals, I go over to the summarizing area and click on the number 2 button. And there is my associate professor count, my counselor count, and so on. If I decide I want to go back and change that, I'll go back to subtotal. And rather than do a count, I want to sum instead. So I'm going to stay with the position column. I'm going to sum the salaries and OK. And it comes back in again to my spreadsheet. I'll summarize that to the number two level. That's the subtotal level. And there's my salaries instead. So it's a really powerful tool allowing you to get recap information of your data. You can use it for summing things, for counting things, a really powerful tool. Just to wrap this session up, I want to remove the subtotals. So I'm back in my data again, still on the data tab, click on subtotal right side of the ribbon, and in the subtotal window, I'll click on remove all, and all my data comes back. 